Today, I'm excited to show you the prototype of The Witcher Path of Destiny. This is my go on board. This is their second Witcher game, the first one being The Old World, and that was, I think, well liked by a lot of people, not just me. Very combat oriented. This one, very story oriented. And unlike The Old World, as the name would imply, this one takes place in the modern day Witcher universe with Geralt and company. Super excited to see what's in store. So let's dive right in. Okay, so quick look around the box. Obviously, this looks pretty good. It looks pretty final, too. This looks nice. The back, obviously, very prototype, right? This is not how it's going to be in the retail. And, of course, like I said, prototype. This will change. In fact, I think right now, because of art approval, the only thing I can really show you is Geralt, right? So, uh, when it comes to the character cards. So, we'll, we'll kind of... I'll edit around that. I'm not going to, like... I don't know what's inside of here, so I don't know how it's going to look like otherwise. But, I mean, as, as, as you can see, there's there's other beloved characters that are going to kind of show up. So, all right, what do we got here? We got some, uh, oh, it looks like we probably have some minis here. Maybe that's a cool way to, I like, that's a cool way to store minis. I dig that. We'll look at those, of course. We got some great looking art here. Love the art on that. It's for the Lesser Evil uh, tale. So excited to look at that. Looks like we got a neoprene mat. Very nice prototype. I can tell you that right now. Like, this is better than some games. Um, minus the whole storage thing. We just got baggies here. Here's the Striga tail. So cool. Looks like we probably got all three of the core tails. Obviously, more will be coming via stretch goals and stuff with that. Edge of the world as well. Oh, I can't wait to play this. This is going to be a lot of fun. I'm excited. Um, here's some of the special cards for them. Uh, I believe in this one, uh, it's a, like a combo thing you're trying to do in one of them. Yep, here's another special one just for a specific tail. Uh, this one, I believe, is the like hidden objective one. It looks like we got some regular cards here of some kind. We'll take a look at that, of course. Then we have a whole lot of cards here. A whole lot of them. Then we have some more cards here. And then here we have the player boards. So, let's go ahead and take a look. Now, I'm going to look at all of them, and I'll edit out what I need to edit out, of course. But let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, so I can say right now, I think the, like, it almost is like each one has a color. Almost, which is kind of cool. They all do have a symbol. Let me go ahead and take the Geralt one out, just so we can kind of look at that one uh, easily. So, let me zoom in a little bit on that, too, for you guys. All right, there we go. So on here, which by the way, nice linen finish, dual layer already. So that's probably what you should expect in the game, I imagine. Uh, they all have a symbol like this. So uh, for Geralt here, for instance, he's got obviously the, the wolf, right? But uh, each character has kind of one like that. Now you'll see here that this is kind of, this is where there's a little slot here. This is for their uh, like side quest cards. So they're gonna have, uh, each person's gonna have their own side quests. This is their experience. And what happens is you kind of go and you get these experiences. And as you can see, eventually you unlock a second one. I love the fact this was, hmm, which is fantastic. That's so fitting. Um, but you'll have these different ones. You'll start, I believe, with the one. And then you'll unlock these other abilities. And each person has their own unique abilities. Once you get to here, and uh, what I love about Go On Board that they've done ever since I reviewed Titans. I remember way back in the day when they were, when they were such a... <laughs> Uh, a small little quaint company before a whole bunch of people really heard about them. I called it like a better rising sun at the time, but they had all of these since like day one, all these like, you know, uh, in other words, like these reminders on here are super useful, uh, especially once you kind of know the rules to kind of get back into it. I've been able to pick up their games after not playing it for a while and get right back into it. And I've with very minimal like rule check, make sure oh, how many cards you have in the hand, stuff like that, because they have they'll have these reminders in all sorts of different places, right? So I know, oh, this unlocks this because there's a little arrow kind of showing it to me. I know you start with this one because it has a little symbol in there. I know that once you go here, you swap this cube out for the golden cube, and now you start gaining victory points. I know that those victory points are marked here without even reading any rule books or anything like that because the little gold thing is right here and it shows a little victory point section on each one so I can know I can get up to 12 extra victory points if I get 40 experience. I really like that. I, I think it's, it's it's well thought out. 
art wise i think this looks really good like it's just a great style of art i don't i don't think this is quite matching the art they've had in their all of their other games um this is a really i don't know kind of kind of almost clean look to it i like it i like it um so let's go and take a look at the other ones if we're able to i'll ask before i post this so we have vesemir here and as you can see different uh um, symbols here, obviously. Uh, he's, he's not going to slice his neck. Don't worry. He's he's very trained. But um, uh, it is kind of interesting that he's in this pose because I think his mini is a little bit different. But as you can see, same exact thing when it comes to here, except they changed the color, which is kind of nice. But they do have different abilities, which, again, I really appreciate. And it looks like the abilities, by the way, they say exactly when you can do it and what happens. And I really appreciate that when you do it, what happens. See, we also have Dandelion, everybody's favorite uh, bard class, essentially. I <laughs> love that. Then we have Asiri, of course. And then we finally have Yennefer, which is awesome. Dig it. Um, I, I, ironically, this is pretty evenly split. Uh, two women and three guys, which is, I think, a pretty good representation there. Um I will say, I think this is hard to see right now. Now, the prototype's coloration is often a little bit hard to do, but this seems a little just dark in general, but the purple, especially here, very hard to see. Um, but obviously, that's going to get fine-tuned. Okay, so now with that out of the way, let's look what else we got. So we got some of the tokens here. Again, prototypes, that's different. Okay, we got some tokens, of course. We're, again, prototype, we're going to go ahead and punch it out. I can see there are two connection points here and here. So let's go ahead and... See, oh, perfect. Look at that. This is already better than most. So, so you can get a little a little hang on thing. It's going to do a reverse like monsters. Still fine. If you look at this, and again, this is just a prototype. This is already beating a lot of other games. There's a little bit of peel you can see right there. So as I play this, it's going to kind of show some wear and tear. Um, I just try to kind of mimic a little bit like, okay, how's this look like after 10 plays, right? People have been main handling tokens and all that. Looks like there's actually a fair amount of tokens here. So uh, three different trays of them here. Though this is a repeat and these are unique. So let's go and do this because it looks like there's still some repeats here. Uh, just looking at the different shapes, I think it looks pretty good. Even now, like the sponginess, it's not. It, it's actually pretty firm here. The layers are actually really crisp. I like that. Um, I know Maladum was just looking at some of their stuff and like, no, we need that to be a lot denser of a press. And so it's really good to see that already just with the the prototype being so good. Have a few different unique shapes here, depending. Again, this one is on Lesser Evil. That's a token you'd only use there. And then it looks like you have some uh, left path, right path kind of stuff. And some uh, specific ones, like this would be, I believe, Siri here, and that would be Geralt and stuff like that for your uh, individual character. That's the tokens. Just got a box now. Let's take a look. We're gonna have to zoom out, I already know. And roll out the red carpet here. Oh, oh, it's gonna be long. It's kinda interesting. Interesting. There we are. Oh, it is long, wow, okay. Yeah, a very, again, very interesting uh, shape here. Looks like maybe, can I zoom out a little bit more? You might see my legs. Avert your eyes if you don't like legs. All right, there you go. So that is like the whole thing. Um, I could <laughs> zoom the camera up even more if I needed to, but that's going to take some adjustment. For now, this is pretty good. A little bit of a roll here, obviously. Uh, I don't know if this is final uh, quality or not for the neoprene. And what I mean by that is really stitching. I don't know if they're going to do stitching or not. This one obviously is not stitched. I always prefer stitched, personally, um, just because uh, I'm afraid of, fr of fraying for the exact same reason that I do the tokens, right? Over time, right, you get like a mouse mouse pad kind of stuff and you get a little bit of like fibrous stuff on the edge. Ideally, I don't want that. But this looks pretty good, except that I believe normally it's going to be up and down like this, right? Now, I'm not going to adjust it that way for now, just so you guys can see it. Just know that I believe it's normally up and down. What I will say, this is bigger than I thought. And what I mean by that these cards, I think this looks about what I expected, right? I kind of expected this. You put your, this is like the uh, order of initiative here, and you're able to like bid on the cards, and there's two cards here. I have a whole details video. I'll link down to that down the description below if you're curious about that. Um, and you can kind of see how the game plays. And so then you kind of bid on different things, and there's an experience point way over here at the end here. Um, I will say this is bigger than I thought, and it's because these cards 
are larger than I thought. Like that's a huge card. That's gonna look freaking sweet. We're gonna I'm gonna lay it on there, but you you, you literally fold them out like pages. Again, reminders. I really appreciate these reminders. That's really nice. Surprisingly, I don't see a lot of reminders when it comes to here and this causing the initiative order. I, I thought I saw in some art that there might be. Maybe not. Maybe this is in the rule book. Um, and I don't know exactly what this is for. I think this is for uh, tokens that affect this, but I'm not exactly sure. I love, by the way, the the drawings here. I really like, like it's like it's some book or something like that. I I really like that. And then you have like the little town, and then you have the wilderness, and you have the castle. Like there's just a lot of good um, visuals here. And this print is actually really nice. Again, sometimes these print a little bit darker, um, but this seems nice. And no weird smell, uh, which I appreciate as well. Uh, you can see the little wooden planks, right? It's like it's on a uh, like like a, a thing that they laid down here, uh, and then the coins spill on the coins happen to be your uh, uh, victory points, right? One, two, three, four, five, and it goes like this all the way down to 29. Looks like you started zero here. So it's cool to see that as well. Um, it looks like it's actually mixed between coins that then go into like marks on a map, which is kind of cool that they, you know, just incorporate that a little bit. It's kind of cool. I like the little, little sigil there as well. So anyway, this is much bigger than I thought. So that's kind of cool. With that in mind, we're gonna zoom in a little bit Say goodbye to the legs. Bye, legs. All right, legs are gone. All right. Sorry to disappoint anybody that was really into that, but we got stuff to look at here. I just, I, I really like this. And again, the, the neoprene mat already in a prototype, that's showing some class. That is, that is impressive. In other words, it, look, I'm not saying you have to have the best prototype ever. What I'm saying is that a prototype, I think, tells a lot about where you're at with the game and what you think of the game, as well as your general means as a company, of course, right? Or as a person, even if it's just you. Um, so I love, like one of my favorite ones is Force of Radgoss, and it literally had like custom uh, tied, you know, twine, like little scrolls and stuff for some of the character art and stuff like that. And that showed so much reverence for the material. Very impressive. This as well, it shows that this company, Go On Board, is very serious about making this game as as beautiful a product as it can be. And I really appreciate that because it means the end result for you guys should be even better. So these tokens, again, temporary here. Um, they're just like wood and and uh, and painted. I will say, so like, again, this, this is the different uh, class symbols, the different per person symbols. Uh, it's only on one side. That's a bummer. <laughs> I hate, hate just one-sided tokens because you always have to flip them all. And then you have just your, your colored cubes or whatever. But uh, again, I don't think this is really uh, super, you know, uh, going to be the final result, obviously. So I'm not going to focus too much on that. But again, just I, I appreciate the level of detail all this is. Like, it, it's really nice. All right, let's look at some of these cards here. Let's see what we're looking at. All right, okay, all right, got them out. All right, so what is going on here? Looks like we got some, okay, so this is uh, some specific things. This is a alliance one, so this is for the lesser evil here. You're picking between these two people. I don't want to necessarily spoil the, the whole story for you guys, so I won't do that, or the whole tale. You'll be able to experience that if you haven't, you know, if you don't know it already. But either way, uh, you, you got different ones for that. So that's just for this one. That's just for that. So um, with that, why don't we go in and take a look at one of the tails and see. Now again, I don't know if this is the, 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 the full thing or not. Like, is this all the cards you get? I don't know, we'll find out. Uh, the, the campaign will be going live here soon, later in October. It's linked down in the description below, of course. And I'll be showing this off at uh, Essence Spiel as well. So if you wanna take a look at that and, and see me actually show off the game and talk about it and all that. You can stay tuned for that. Subscribe if you haven't already, of course. Okay, so my understanding is like, like that is awesome looking. I love that even in the back, it doesn't look spoiled anything. So you would just set it down like this. Let me put that more in line with the, the center of the camera. Okay, so you, you put it like this and you literally flip pages over like that. And this is how you go through it. It's literally like that. Um, it would almost be kind of cool if this was like a little spiral bound thing or something that I could actually flip through would be pretty neat. I wouldn't mind that versus cards unless there's some card gameplay, but, um, or like card 
you know, interaction, like, you know, insert a card or something like that. But I think you just kind of go through this like that. And that's your, that's your, 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 your story here. You read little bits or you might skip to a, a later page or whatever. So you can, you know, oh, okay, I'm on that page or whatever. And then you skip down over here and now you're doing that. And they have different instructions, different things are happening. And obviously you don't see every single path there. And then I don't even know what the last card looks like. It looks like it just says the end. So that's kind of cool. So there's that the end as well. <laughs> and there's that the end as well. So as you can see, three different endings to this story that you can navigate through uh, depending on, you know, your, just your different decisions or whatever. But I really, I, I do dig this just conceptually. And I think it looks like really, really nice. Like I think that looks good. To me, that looks good. I I, I think that's kind of cool. So anyway, that's what they're doing there. And I mean, you know, like how much of that's worthwhile, but you have the theme, you have the IP, you may as well use it, right? And uh, I think they're definitely using it there, but also, not with you guys, but I'm all about, not necessarily immersion per se, because this is also still a semi-abstract game and how you play it, but uh, I, I just, these are physical products, and so if I'm touching it, if I'm looking at it, if I'm, you know, at all interacting with it, I spend some good money on it, I want it to be kind of nice. Maybe that's just me. Look at another one here. Um, this one with the objectives, I think, is the uh, edge of the world, I think is what this one is. I think. I, think. I, I don't remember per se, but again, it would, it would let me know. But either way, you have um, these like essentially hidden objectives and then ways to be able to see that hidden objective. And that's what this is. And so you would be able to kind of take a peek at what that is. And, and what's going to happen, you know, the number of two colored cards in players' hands after the third round compared to other players. Most you get four victory points, one less you get two victory points, right? So he, just d different ways to get bonus points there. And that's for this one, I believe. Now, I don't think there's going to be much of a difference here. So I may not even show the, the Striga one if there's not a huge difference here. Because, you know, why, why bother? Um, but I'm kind of curious to see, like, okay, how different does this look? I think it'll look fairly similar structure-wise. Again, when you're reading it, obviously, it's going to be way different, but, um, I mean, that's just looking, sorry, this, you know, anytime you get this, like, exact bag thing, <laughs> it becomes difficult. Okay. So, obviously, art's different, right? But when you're actually kind of going through it, as you can see, kind of the, kind of the same look, right, as everything else there. Now, obviously, there's going to be, uh, I think, art like in the back as well, right? So you get art in the front, you get art in the back, and then otherwise it's mostly just text. So we're not going to look too much at the Striga except to show the art, which I think looks great, of course. And then there's uh, some stuff for it also. So, and I don't know, it shows three, I don't, I don't, you know, who knows what that is. Now there's this, then we got the main cards, and then we just got minis. So let's go and take a look. Yeah, so this is, if we take this, we match it with our color, right, gray and gray or silver or whatever, and you would slot that in. And that says gain victory points depending on the number of green cards in your hand, right? And you can actually see the green, right? So again, you can remember exactly what it is. Let me zoom in a little bit for you guys. Whoa. Probably too far. Yeah, so right there. So you can see victory points, question mark, right? Same symbol, green. Hey, if I have three, I get one. If I have four, I get three. If I have five plus, I get five. It's as simple as that. And it looks like they're all the same except the color that you want is different. Um, except, again, victory with the number of cards without symbols in your hand for uh, Yennefer there. So uh, kind of interesting to see that as well. Um, It'll be interesting also to see if there's any different feel or theme around this. Like, oh, yellow cards tend to be, I suspect this is what it is, uh, you know, like fighting or whatever, right? And the reason I say that, maybe green is fighting and uh, no symbols, magic and stuff like that, is because you have the four different symbols and I'm wondering if uh, the colors tend to match a certain one or not. I'm not sure. Don't know. So as you can see, it looks like your character's art is on yours so you can kind of match it to that which is kind of interesting and i don't know if they get different amounts of different kinds or what i think 
That's a possibility. And then, aha, uh -huh, okay. So now we got all sorts of, oh, well, it's nice that there is art on here. It's very subdued, which is kind of interesting, right? So very subdued there. And it looks like some of the characters are, you know, reused. So it, I don't know if it's kind of weird to like, oh, I'm Geralt, but I bought one that has, you know, some other character on it or not. But um, I do, oh, that's kind of it. So this is, so this one, I mean, look how different this is. So we have ones like this, right? And then we have ones like this, and then you have ones like this, right? So it's like one art, two there, you got two arts here, one thing there. And notice again, you have different amounts of like colors and stuff like that as well. So there seems to be, uh, I don't know, whatever. Um, there seems to be a fair bit of uh, differences considering this is all symbol based. That'll be something I look at in the review is how different it can feel with the different symbols versus like I'm big on card games, but often I like card games because of the interplay between uh, symbols, keywords, colors, stuff like that. Looks like uh, I don't see any that have three colors. I've, so far, I've only seen two. So I think that might be the limit is two. Um, but yeah, actually more art than I thought, which is kind of cool. And again, you're doing this thing where it's like in color and then sketch, which is kind of interesting to see. So uh, there's kind of a, a, a look at some of the, the, the cards. And again, I'll explain more uh, detail when it comes to the actual review and stuff like that. We'll, we'll talk through and all that. So excited to talk more to you guys about that. Guys! If you want to see that interview uh, that I'll have at Essence Field, that showcase, by all means, subscribe and see more really awesome games. If you are interested in the review, feel free to check that out. But before I go, minis. We'll do minis and uh, then I'll say my goodbyes. Try not to break everything, but they're like in a string. That's kind of fun. <laughs> all right, so. One at a time. Ugh. Just attaching the tape, huh? That's interesting. I don't think I've ever... Again, every prototype's different. I, I love that. I have never think I've ever gotten minis like that. That seemed to work pretty well, though. So that's kind of cool. It's kind of cool. Keeps them all together. Hello? Okay. All right. Okay. Ah, get out of here. Out here. What the heck? Oh, miniatures. Oh, they wrote miniatures on it. Like I, yeah, that way I don't throw it away like trash. Oh my gosh, you get off me, tape. You put all the trash there, right? <laughs> all right, we're gonna zoom in on these. You know we are. You know. All right, so it looks like we do have the uh, bases colored or uh, a little clip-on base. But obviously, if you painted your mini, you could just do the the um, the mini in in a certain color. Um, this is a three D print resin uh so it, it's obviously going to be quite nice uh, one of the things let me zoom in a little bit even more for you guys there we go that's pretty good um the reason i know that is because obviously you can see some of the support it's right there and just i've 3d printed enough resin to 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 recognize it when i see it uh pretty good this is like a um kind of a, a blue uh i think they call it like navy gray or something like that often it's like 8K resin and stuff like that. It looks very nice. Um, sculpted bases, so that's obviously nice. Uh, the scale is kind of hard to tell. I'd say about 30, um, maybe anywhere between 20 and 32. It's kind of hard because she is kind of leaning a little bit, but and I don't really have a point of reference right now, and that's okay. It doesn't really matter too bad. Um, so there are definitely some small uh, things, right? Like uh, her hand here has some very fine detail when it comes to uh, fingers, right, same here. So it'd be nice to see how that translates to the final miniature, of course. Very well secure here and here. Uh, it's smart to use the base like this. I love the uh, fungus on the stump. I'm always a big fan of fungus on stumps. I know that's a weird sentence to say, but I am. Uh, definitely, again, some fine detail, like here on the tree. Some really great looking kind of bark texture. But I don't think that would translate to the PVC well. So ideally, that's accentuated a little bit. And it very well might be. Again, this is a prototype. Um, essentially, you want to like exaggerate them a little bit so that because when you do it in plastic, there's a tiny bit of shrinkage in the plastic. And you, and you essentially want to try to avoid that. Otherwise, great um, pose 
right, with her arm out here and her arm forward here and that space there and the space there and just it, it, it it's not holding any uh any punches when it comes to the actual running thing and not making it look awkward uh to make it a little bit easier so again it's pretty skinny uh definitely possible but uh I, either that needs to be thickened or abs i would say um but again it depends on their their mix so that they know their uh, manufacturer probably better than i do either way looks cool and very obviously her i like that and uh i think all the other sculpts are going to be fairly different as well so let's see what the other ones look like here. This one is kind of interesting. Um, it was noted by some of my patrons when they first saw this, how similar this is to the uh, one that we had in uh, uh, the old world, right? I think, I don't know, it, it's kind of, I mean, at the end of the day, that's that's the, the thing you do, right? Is you, you, you hold your hand out and you have the little little symbol on your hand. I don't see the symbol on his hand. Like the other one did, and I don't know if that would be. Again, uh, this resin is a little bit bendable, but that, again, this is prototype, so it wouldn't be stored that way. Very different base. I like that. So even if you don't necessarily paint the rim, you color. First of all, they seem quite different uh, pose-wise, right? But uh, the bases are going to be very different as well, right? If you paint it, especially, it's going to be like green and brown and stuff. Where this is going to be like grays. Um, for size, uh, I think he's definitely a lot stockier. I think that's actually pretty close. Again, he's very much just standing up and she's very much leaning forward. So I think this is pretty close. And he, again, uh, there's going to be a height difference as well. Love the hook here. That's a nice attention to detail. That's kind of cool. I dig that. His hand with his his, his his finger down, right? Very cool to see that. Um, I'd like to see that in uh, the final production plastic, of course. It's going to be a contention point. It's going to be kind of difficult. And again, maybe you make that ABS or something. I don't know. The two different blades, it's always nice to see as well. So you can deal with monsters and humans. Always a fan of that. And again, I actually really like the spacing. I think that looks great. Um, it's, it's nice and distinguished. And it's not like perfectly even or anything like that either, which I like. Uh, let's see, hair looks good. I dig that. Um, some super fine detail on this armor. Again, I like to see see that exaggerate a little bit. Even on this pants, right? Like exaggerate that a little bit. Make sure that shows up really nice, um, which again, they, they have plenty of time still to do. The face looks great. Really like the face as well. Very cool. I dig it. All right. And and by the way, I'm colorblind. White, this white and gray looks okay. This is kind of an off-white, right? It's a little bit of a, uh, a, a cream color almost. Kind of interesting. Da, da, da. Oh my gosh. All right. All right. Almost there. All right. I love the magic users. All right. Let's see what's going on here. Oh, this is fancy. Okay. All right, so very fancy. <laughs> Again, different base, love that. I really appreciate that. She's floating, I love that. Use this magic uh, stuff to your advantage. They definitely are. Uh, the long flowing cape is amazing. And these ridges here are gonna be stellar. You're gonna put a wash on that, it's gonna look gorgeous. A little bit of a dry brush highlight if you even want. If you don't wanna do like a side brush thing, it's, it's gonna look great, it's gonna look great. Hair looks good too. Uh, the outfit looks awesome. I love the like kind of fur accents and stuff like that. That looks really good. Uh, right now, the fingers very distinct from the flames, which again, I appreciate. Sometimes it's going to be kind of hard to tell. And this style of wispiness to this, I really like. Often you see more of a kind of a bubble cloud effect. So this kind of like stringiness like this, I really like because it differentiates it a lot. Um, it looks like her uh, it, it, her feet do kind of go through it. But I think that's on purpose, right? She's supposed to be, you know, not like on top of it, but more like in it. Um, so I think that looks good. Yeah, that looks, that's awesome. That looks really, really good. Um, facial detail, again, good. Separation between the uh, the hair and the face, looking looking really nice. I like that. Now, sometimes when you get floating, you get too high, but she doesn't look to be too high, which is good. I mean, she's, she's not too high off, right? You don't want her like towering above everyone else either. But that seems to be actually pretty... Pretty okay. I'm okay with that. I'm, I'm she's just about where his like sword is, so I think that works out well. Okay, two more. All right, saving the best for last, of course. <laughs> nope, not quite because here's Dandelion now. <laughs> Wasn't sure which one I got. All right, uh, again, different base, very different base. This one uh, looks like he's like in a tavern which I think is kind of cool. I'm trying to see what that is on the, oh, like roses and stuff. Okay, 
that works. I'm okay with that. Um, he's got his uh, his instrument here, and he you know his hand up here. I will say it looks like his hands probably it looks like his fingers broke. Um, his his fingers are normally bigger than that. That's definitely broken, which is fine. This is resin, so it's going to be a little different, obviously, um, and it will be easier to break than otherwise. So. Um, yeah, here he's got fingers, you can see. In fact, they're like separated, and that's definitely not gonna, not, not gonna fly. This is all gonna be one piece, so that'll be, uh, adjusted in the sculpt a little bit. Love the clothes, love the poofiness, of course, and his, like, his, like, slender, like, bootleg things going on there and stuff. His hat, his feather, all that looks great. His hair coming out, facial features, and again, just overall pose. I will say all of them, you know, she's got this sticking up, she's, he's got his hands stretched up. Right, he's got his uh, um, like scabbard and sword up, and obviously she's just floating. So they all have this like dynamic height to them, which I think is kind of cool. I really dig that. Also, notice he's not centered, which I really appreciate as well. So there's there's more base in front of him than behind him. I always like when they're not quite like dead center, because uh, it can often look like it's like purposely framed, and then it makes it look a little unnatural. So I actually really appreciate that. All right, on this one, I kind of mentioned the sword being a little bit different. And as you can see here now, um, I think in the one he has, the sword is straight back and just kind of resting. Here he's holding it with two hands, and it's facing back a long ways. I actually like this pose more than the art. <laughs> so I'm not going to complain about that at all. Uh, again, facing different. Love the feet. Love the wraps and stuff that he has here. Just this whole armor set's different, which I appreciate. Very, very stocky, which is nice as well. Again, very visually different. Again, the sword adding to the height there as well, which is nice. That, oh, that looks awesome. Looks so good. Um, yeah, no, th these are nice. I really, I really appreciate these. I think these are, these are a lot of fun. So, as I said, there is a link down in the description below to this preview campaign. Feel free to follow along. And also, please do consider subscribing if you want to see a review of this game, if you want to see uh, my thoughts on this game in the future. If you want to see this covered at Essence Spiel, I will be doing all of that. So if you are at all interested in this Witcher game or so much more, again, subscribe. I look forward to bringing you some great content coming up here. It's going to be exciting times on this channel, and I can't wait to share them with you. All right, guys, have a great rest of your day. Take care. Bye, guys.